Right now, elevated levels of PFAS are found at a Madison Park. How the city is handling it. And the Badgers are heading to the national championship in volleyball, taking down the Baylor Bears tonight in Pittsburgh. Plus, a shopping spree for more than 100 kids just in time for the holidays. From the Channel3000.com Alert Center, this is News 3 Now at 10. Thank you for joining us tonight. High concentrations of PFAS, a combination of chemicals, were found in foam samples taken from Old Brick Park boat launch. The DNR took samples of surface water and foam in October, but the findings were just released today. And Gabriella Becerra joins us with how the city is addressing this. Gabby? This is the first time foam had been tested for PFAS compounds in this area. And now state and city officials are investigating where the source could be coming from. I come out here for the last five, six years. It's a nice spot. Madison's nice that way. We have a lot of places where you can kind of park at the park and see your tip ups. John Fox fishes out of Lake Monona at Old Brick Park and says he's seen fewer fish over the years. I definitely don't catch as many fish as we used to. This, like I said, this used to be a great area. There were tons of fish out here. A connection he thinks could be associated with pollutants such as PFAS in the water. This is going to take a little bit of work and off. unfortunately once it gets released into the environment it's very difficult to track it down and capture it. Um, we, we need to figure out where the sources of this are in our community and try and stop it at the source. DNR is working with the city of Madison to find the source of the pollutant. Mayor Satya Rhodes Conway released a statement saying, I've asked City Parks Division staff to increase monitoring of the boat launch and to report any cases of foam they identify to the DNR. It can um, accumulate in the environment in very high levels, so, um, and then it can get into the surface water um, and groundwater, which communities can then use as their drinking water sources. Um, it can affect um, the fish, um, and then we consume the fish, so then we um, um, have that um, in our bodies. The DNR is testing fish tissue samples for PFAS, and the results will be shared in January. Until then, fishers like Fox will keep going back to the lake. Hope that they can come up with some kind of um, I don't know, solution to the whole thing, you know, it's, it's tough. The DNR describes PFAS as a bright white foamy substance that may be sticky. If you come across it, the DNR says do not touch it, and that includes keeping pets away from it as well. All right, Gabriella Becerra reporting. Gabby, thanks. Assembly Democrats are calling for their freshman colleague to resign after an investigation found he verbally sexually harassed a legislative employee. The probe by the Legislative Human Resources Office found Representative Stausch Grzynski of Green Bay violated state policies. The victim says the harassment happened at an off-site location after work hours. That complaint has been substantiated. In the nation's capital, the focus turns to the Senate now that the House of Representatives has impeached President Trump. Majority Leader Mitch McConnell Connell met with Minority Leader Chuck Schumer this afternoon, trying to reach an agreement on how a Senate trial will proceed. But for now, the process is at an impasse as Congress goes home for the holidays. Seven of the top Democratic presidential candidates took to the stage for the sixth and final debate of the 2019 calendar year tonight at Loyola Marymount in L.A. First half of the debate, they each made their case on how they beat President Trump, and then they bickered over money in politics. South Bend, Indiana Mayor Pete Buttigieg came under attack from Elizabeth Warren and Amy Klobuchar for taking money from wealthy donors. Mayor Buttigieg didn't back down, saying Democrats would need a lot of money to beat the president. The Senate on Thursday approved a nearly $1.4 trillion spending deal to keep the government funded and avert a shutdown at the end of the week. The bills have already passed the House and now go to the president for his signature. The legislative package includes a military and civilian federal worker pay raise, federal funding for election security grants and gun research, and a repeal of three health care taxes designed to help pay for the Affordable Care Act. The Democratic-led House has given President Trump an overwhelming bipartisan victory on a renegotiated trade agreement with Canada and Mexico. The House approved the deal today on a 385 to 41 vote. That bill being referred to as the USMCA now heads to the Senate. The deal was sought by farmers, ranchers, and business owners anxious to move past the months of trade tensions that have complicated spending and hiring decisions. The Badgers women's volleyball team is heading to the championship game. Tonight, they took down the top-ranked Baylor Bears in four sets. After dropping the first set, the Badgers rallied for three straight sets. Wisconsin will play against either Minnesota or the defending national champion Stanford. 
Those two teams play on Saturday. We'll have more highlights and post-game reaction in sports. And let's get a look at our first, first alert forecast now with Chief Meteorologist Gary Canalti. Well, we're less than a week away from Christmas, and it's a very quiet weather pattern across the upper Midwest. No precipitation showing up anywhere around uh, southern Wisconsin. High temperatures today rebounded right back into the middle 30s after a cold day yesterday. We're in the mid-20s right now. Our temperatures have been fluctuating up and down by a couple of degrees. By tomorrow morning, we should probably be in the lower 20s. But look for variably cloudy skies tomorrow. The high temperature up at 40 and will be even milder from Saturday all the way through the Christmas holiday. I'll have more details on weather in a few minutes. Gary, thank you. At least one person is presumed dead after a house explosion and multi-alarm fire in South Philadelphia. The fire commissioner says one person was found under the rubble inside the row home. Another person may be trapped under debris in an adjacent home, but crews have suspended their search for the night. 60 people nearby have been evacuated. Crews are still dousing some hot spots. The explosion and fire leveled three houses and significantly damaged two others. Incredible video from Sarasota, Florida tonight. Police say a man who was trying to escape from police crashed his truck into the rental car center at Sarasota Bradenton International Airport. Police say the 40 year old man left the road, crashed through a chain link fence and eventually into the building. Now there were two employees behind the rental car counter and amazingly they were not hurt. The airport officials say that crash caused about a quarter million dollars in damage. Two people are dead, including the gunman, after a fatal shooting at an assisted living facility in Westerly, Rhode Island. Officials say a 66-year-old man living at the complex shot three employees, killing one of them before apparently killing himself. After securing the building and reviewing surveillance video, local and state police determined the suspect was a resident. The trial for the accused Parkland school shooter has been delayed until next summer. Today, a judge agreed to postpone the case from the original January 27th start date. Defense attorneys say the original schedule did not afford them enough time to mount a credible defense. The 21-year-old suspect, Nicholas Cruz, faces the death penalty if convicted in the 2018 massacre that left 17 people dead. Chief Alonzo Alfonso Morales will remain the top cop in Milwaukee for at least the next four years. His reappointment ceremony was held this morning at City Hall. Morales said some of his main focuses for the city moving forward is bridging racial divides and tackling domestic violence. Nurses with the UW Health System have announced today they are forming a union. They're asking the hospital to voluntarily acknowledge them, but the hospital board so far has not. Since Act 10 removed the union the nurses did have, many say they've seen factors that play into patient safety go down. They say there are often not enough nurses working for the amount of patients they have, and they say that can lead to unintended consequences when it comes to patient care. They say this move will hopefully give them a seat at the table to talk about staffing levels. It's become just very difficult to adequately do our jobs, and adequately is not what nurses want to do. We want to be the best we can be. We want to do everything we can, and we're just being forced to work short all the time. In a statement to News 3 Now, a spokesperson for the hospital said the board has made up for losing collective bargaining with an employee advisory council, surveys and forums. They say that system will continue. Two Midwest health care providers are no longer trying to merge. La Crosse-based Gunderson was considering merging with Marshfield Clinic Health System. In a release today, the system's elected to remain independent. And Gunderson and Marshfield Clinic announced back in May the systems were talking possible merger, which would have extended from northeast Iowa to northern Wisconsin. Another Madison restaurant is closing this weekend. New Orleans Takeout on Monroe Street posted on its Facebook page that this Saturday, December 21st, will be its last day and thanks customers for the past 15 years. The city of Beloit confirms Amazon is the planned tenant for a plot of land that was just sold. The 80-acre property at the southeast corner of Gateway Boulevard and Collie Road was sold at a sale price of $80. That's just a dollar an acre. It'll become an Amazon distribution warehouse. City officials say development has already started at the property, but they're not sure about the project timeline. Crews are constructing a 1 million square foot warehouse. Amazon is expected to announce the jobs and economic impact for the area in January. The demolition of an historic building in Rock County causing a bit of controversy. Janesville city officials say they tried to work with the building's owner to make the necessary repairs, but the building was determined to be structurally unsafe. There are no plans for what will eventually take its place. Special moment tonight for nearly 150 local kids and a handful of families. Boys and Girls Club of Dane County talk, uh, taking kids and families on a holiday shopping spree at the Target Hilldale with the help of some Badger basketball players. They were also treated to a meal, making for many a night to remember. I think the whole spirit of the holidays and just giving back and 
you know, really creating, really creating an atmosphere for kids that may not have, you know, the that come from humble beginnings and don't have the kind of the um, all the benefits they need. I think this is just great, and it, it really brings joy. The kids submitted their wish list to Selfless Ambition, a Madison organization that serves area families through acts of love. And tomorrow, a special report you will only see on News 3 Now. It's a story many of you have been following from the very beginning. One last time, our Jamie Perez sits down with Gene Wittenhiller, the Prairie du Sac man whose final Christmas wish has gone viral. Find out what he says all of the support has meant to him and his family tomorrow on News 3 Now this morning. Still to come at 10, as we near the weekend, temperatures will continue to rise. Gary will have his forecast coming up. But first, a special night for a local mother and daughter, both celebrating their graduation. Stay with us. For reliable weather day in and day out, watch First Alert Weather. More than 1,500 students graduated from Madison College tonight. Two of them earned their degree by working together as a mother-daughter team. Katrina and Nevada Real never expected to accept their degrees together, but now say they couldn't be happier. Both are getting degrees in accounting assistance. They set up their schedules to match perfectly. The two studied together, kept each other on track with homework, and even created a little competition for grades. For grade-wise, we're very competitive with homework, very. grades, <laughs> um, you name it. So, so like, there'd if, be things if, that she can get and I don't understand, or vice versa. And then we teach each other how to get it, how to find the answers. They may have conquered their first degree, but the two say there's a lot more to come. They will return to school for an associate's in accounting and then more schooling in human resource management, all of which they plan to do together. First year engineers at the UW have designed a special cart for a dog <laughs> named Louie, born without front legs. According to a release, the dog's owners contacted the College of Engineering early this year after hearing about past students working to create prosthetic legs for animals. 
The course gives first-year students an opportunity to learn engineering through hands-on experience. His owners say Louie is still getting used to the cart and will walk in it with some guiding and some of course, dog treat encouragement. <laughs> Parts of Wisconsin are preparing for ice shoves. They're caused by current strong winds or temperature differences, pushing ice onto the shore, creating piles. As ice begins to blanket the Bay of Green Bay, water levels are at all-time record highs. They say well, many homes along the bay have breakwaters or all kinds of stuff piling up on the beach there. They may not be effective this year. Other than adding to the barrier between your home and the water, they say there are very few options, really, when it comes to battling Mother Nature's power. This year, because the water levels are so high, um, those are, you know, not as tall as they used to be. You know, they're usually a couple feet high, but now they're maybe, uh, you know, half the height that they're supposed to be. So when the ice comes in, instead of encountering an object that's going to stop it at several feet high, it's going to be lower, so the ice has a better chance of making it over that initial uh, obstacle and maybe making it onto people's property, their house. Other than adding to the barrier between your home and the water, he says there are really very few options when it comes to battling Mother Nature's power. And we saw Mother Nature get a little kinder today with the temperatures. Really, it was kind of a beautiful day for this time of the year. Yeah, we're going to have to be worrying about ice melting across mm -hmm. uh, some of the area lakes as temperatures get into the 40s and stay above freezing even at night. Now, Doppler track, other than a couple of flurries over northern Lake Michigan, there's nothing across the upper Midwest, nothing to add to the snowpack. The southern edge of the snowpack will probably start eroding away from about La Crosse to maybe just south of Stevens Point, but north of there, there'll be enough snow to stick on the ground through the Christmas holiday. Of course, here in southern Wisconsin, we're not looking for any snow. In fact, uh, it'll be mild and getting milder. Temperatures tomorrow will be around 40. will be between about 42 and 47 from Saturday all the way through Christmas Day. No precipitation expected through Christmas Eve, with the next chance being a rain shower late in the day on Christmas uh, afternoon. Temperatures over the next 10 days well above normal. The average high temperature goes from 29 to 27. We'll see temperatures in the 30s and 40s, and even the 30s are still a good 5 to 10 degrees above average. The 8 to 14 14-day temperature outlook. This is for the end of December and the first couple of days of January, showing that the warm temperatures will continue across the eastern two-thirds of the country. The west will stay cooler than normal with a series of storm systems there. But those storms will gradually start making it across the country. And so we have an elevated chance of above normal precipitation. Two storms to watch. One at the end of the weekend after Christmas, between Christmas and New Year's, and then another a couple of days right after New Year's. Both of those will probably have more rain here than snow, but there could be some heavier snow out to the west of us across parts of Minnesota and Iowa. The live view from the Edgewater Sky Camp downtown Madison. Things are very quiet out there tonight. High today made it up to 36 after starting out at 16 at midnight early this morning, and right now we're at 25. Temperatures have been going up and down by a couple of degrees each hour, uh, depending on whether or not there's cloud cover that given hour. Winds are out of the east at 6 miles per hour. The wind chill is at 18 degrees. High temperatures today stayed in the 20s over that dense snowpack to the north. We're in the mid-30s here, and look at how close the 40s were. Des Moines almost at 50 degrees this afternoon, and that mild air is heading in our direction. There's actually a, a weak stationary front kind of in between here that divides the colder weather over the uh, dense snowpack to the north to the uh, slightly milder conditions where there is very little in the way of snow cover across southern Wisconsin and northern Illinois. But as you see, the jet stream continues out of the southwest. That will continue to bring in mild Pacific air and a series of storm systems pounding the west coast over the next few days will just continue to drive that mild air eastward and keep the best chances for precipitation well to the west of us. Here's that stationary front that I was talking about, but notice how it kind of bends back toward the north and it'll actually become a warm front with time. So as these southerly winds and southeasterly winds start are taking hold. Those easterly winds will shift to the south and temperatures will turn even milder. So while temperatures now teens and 20s here, you can see to the south, they're in the 30s, still 40s down toward Kansas City. And on future track, notice that wind shift back to the southeast and then eventually to the south. And that's what get our temperatures back up to around 40 for tomorrow and probably stay in the 40s through the weekend and through the first half of next week. Variably cloudy skies overnight, not as cold. I've got a low of 22, but again, those temperatures will fluctuate up and down a bit over the next few hours. Tomorrow, though, look for some breaks in the clouds. Uh, high temperature at 40 degrees with winds becoming southerly at 8 to 15 miles per hour. On future track, notice that wind shift to the southeast. Temperatures start climbing tomorrow with highs around 40 degrees. Then look for temperatures to stay in the upper 20s for tomorrow night and mild southwest.
westerly winds bring high temperatures into the lower 40s for Saturday. 7 to 10 day forecast, very mild conditions through the weekend and into the first half of next week, including Christmas Eve and Christmas Day. Maybe a rain shower chance Christmas Day afternoon. Ending as a mix of rain and snow early on Thursday. Those temperatures, though, staying warmer than average. That uh, rain on Sunday might start with a mix of rain and snow and end as snow Sunday mm -hmm. night. That would be the next appreciable storm that I could see. So a lot of people are going to be upset that it's not a white mm -hmm. Christmas, but let's think about travelers. Travel Tra travel shouldn't, shouldn't silver lining somewhere, right? Yeah, right? A lot of the country should be quiet. West Coast will be the stormy area. Wow. All right, Gary, thank you. You're Thanks, welcome. Gary. Party like it's 2013. The Badgers now one win away from a national championship. We'll show you how it went down against top seed Baylor in the semifinals. Volleyball highlights next in sports. Well, it has been six years since the Badgers volleyball team made an appearance in the national title match. And just like 2013, Wisconsin had to beat the number one seed to get there. The 2019 squad, though, featuring these ladies, All-American Dana Retke and Molly Haggerty. A little bit of adversity to overcome to start, though. Baylor taking the first set, so Wisconsin trying to even it out. Dana Retke with a the kill. Their Badgers take set number two. Then in the third, Wisconsin out to an early lead, thanks in part to Molly Haggerty, who is having the match of her life tonight. 
tonight. 15 kills, one of them there, 19 or nine digs rather. Badgers take set three. Wisconsin up by five now, match point. And Haggerty trying to get something going, but not quite. And then an overpass by Baylor setting up Dana Retke, one of her team leading 19 kills tonight. The Badgers knocking off top seed Baylor three to one. And even though they were down to start, they knew they had to keep on fighting. Being down, we're, we're okay with it. We just know how to play Badger volleyball and point by point we come back and we just keep making plays. But we know that we're gonna be just unstoppable. So I'm really proud of the way that we kind of just shook off the first set and kept moving forward to the second. So it was just an awesome team effort right there. And they'll face the winner of Minnesota and Stanford. Stanford up right now as we speak. Now, Wisconsin uh, ranked fourth in the country by Flow Wrestling, hosting its first ever home match of the season at the Fieldhouse. But there was something else cool tonight. Tonight, the Badgers holding a sock toss that we told you about earlier. Those socks will be donated to the Loser Community Education Center right here in Madison. Bucky doing a fine job catching those socks. Back to the duel now. We start at 125 pounds. True freshman Eric Barnett with the head throw and then the pin in the first period. Badgers start up by six. To 133 pounds now, second ranked Seth Gross with the tilt. Getting four back points, he would win the match by tech fall. On to 157 pounds now, Wisconsin's Drew Sharon Brock getting his opponent on his back, getting the fall. Wisconsin wins the duel against Kent State 42 to six. Well, you knew it was going to be a fun one. Two of the top teams in the NBA facing off tonight right here in Wisconsin. Lakers Bucks. Let's go. That obviously means LeBron is in the house, but there's a new king on the come up. His name, might have heard of him. Giannis Antetokounmpo knocking down a three, a career high five three pointers for the Greek freak tonight. Pretty, he's impressed by himself right now. Later, Dante DiVincenzo, the quick shot to George Hill. Hill with 21 points off the bench. To the fourth quarter now, Chris Middleton to Giannis. Check this out 34 points, 11 rebounds for the Greek freak. And then later, Middleton, nice fake, pulls up for the three. 15 points for him. The Bucks beat the Lakers for the sixth straight time, 111 to 104 the final. They're at the Knicks on Saturday. To high school girls basketball now, second ranked Madison Memorial hosting Verona. We pick it up in the second half. Memorial Charlotte Sweet, nice backdoor cut, lays it in for two. Spartans up big. Then a little bit later on, watch this. Memorial's Leilani Kapinas with the steal. Then the Euro step for the score. She's awesome. Memorial adding to their lead. They win 80 to 53, the final. We'll be right back.
Gary's here with a final check of your forecast. Looking pretty nice out there. Temperatures right now, middle 20s. These temperatures might go up or down a degree or two. Pretty steady temperatures overnight, but then we start rising tomorrow. I look for a high of 40 degrees by tomorrow afternoon and well into the 40s from Saturday all the way through Christmas Day. A little cooler toward the end of next week, but still above normal for this time of year. It'll be like L.A. weather when we get there oh, to the totally. Rose Bowl, right? It'll be just like, exactly the same. We'll be fine once we get there. <laughs> it's not too far away. <laughs> no. Thanks for joining us for News 3 Now at 10. Do something good, and we'll see you back here tomorrow.